Okay, so following up from the last tutorial, uh, what we're going to do now is uh, draw a one point perspective, interior uh, perspective of a space. Um, this drawing is not to scale, but it, and it's not completely accurate, but it's, um, it's fairly close to what I'm going to draw today, and it's um, related to the drawings that Professor Hughes and I uh, are going to put on to the Google Drive for you. Although, like I said in the last tutorial, I did make some changes um, just for the sake of the tutorial to make things a bit simpler. You can see I've moved some things around. So there are going to be discrepancies between the files that you see, the drawings that you see on Google Drive and this tutorial. Uh, but that's not necessarily important. Uh, for me, I think it's better. I don't want you just to mimic what I'm doing. Um, I would rather you translate what I do here to those drawings. In any case, uh, it'll help you uh, learn better. Okay. So we're going to have this space that you can see is sort of, uh, it's, it's really one large space, but it's broken up between a, a first floor here and a second floor there. I'll show you that in a minute in a section. <clears throat> Stairs that go up to that second floor. Um, there's sort of glass facades on both sides so I can see through. Um, outside there's a shift in the ground plane um, so that you can see that out here is ground that's lower than the ground that's actually back here. Um, if you're in Hughes section, I think you know this already. If you're in my section, um, I might have to explain this to you this week uh, a little bit better, okay? So for the sake of the tutorial, just imagine uh, that you already know uh, or are familiar with this uh, drawing because you will be, okay? Some terms that you want to look up um, in the design drawing book between 224 and 283, uh, the, horizon, the horizon line, the ground line, the center of vision, uh, which you can see here, I've placed again off to the left of center. We did that the last tutorial on the grid. Uh, you can kind of see how that's set up and why I might have done that to see that stair. Um, horizontal measuring line, the vertical measuring line, your diagonal point, your station point, um, and you can find all that in that chain book. Again, we are drawing this um, using the one perspective, uh, one point perspective grid, which you can find on 256 and 257. Okay. Just to kind of give you an idea about the space that we're actually looking at, <clears throat> I've made some changes, I've noted them here. I made the building a little bit longer uh, than, than the, uh, the drawings uh, show you on the Google Drive. Um, uh, I've changed some vertical heights so that they're not um, odd fractions of things. I've sort of just rounded things off to whole numbers and half meters. Um, and I also um, change the height of the second floor above that first floor so that it's two meters so that we could e use a, an easy rise um, of 0.2 and get 10 steps um, on that staircase uh, just to make this um, to make this easy. This is drawn again at 1 to 50 which makes sense in terms of the 1 to 50 scale of our one point perspective although those two things don't necessarily have to correlate in this case, it's more coincidental, but I kind of did it on purpose just so we could kind of um, see how one translates to the other. Okay. Let me go back real quick and just show you a couple of things that we're going to be dealing with uh, while I'm there. This space is really just a kind of an attic space. We talked about that in my section. I'm sure Professor Hughes has talked to you about a few one of his students. Um, it gives us the ability to lower that ceiling plane so that we're really compressing this space here in a way and we're expanding this space here so that that, that jog and the ceiling has a more kind of architectural um, spatial implication than just uh, allowing for some empty space in the ceiling here. Of course, we did talk about why that might exist in my section uh, for heating, ventilation, air conditioning, lights, those kind of things. But in this case, I think it's really just to shape those spaces differently uh, so they both have a sort of separate um, and unique identity. Okay, so we've got these glass facades. You can see that the building shell actually moves out past um, the face of this building here so that it gives a kind of covered um, patio or porch off the back. Okay, uh, and you can see that we're going to be using what we call in the business a storefront window system, which is just uh, extruded aluminum um, parts and pieces um, that are assembled on site based on the dimensions that are given. Um, and a kind of commercial uh, res residential door. Um, I will, in my section, I will uh, give you sort of links to look at so you understand what it is that you're drawing. Um, we'll talk about that through this perspective as we go. 
All right, I'm going to go back and I'm going to start with that perspective, one point perspective grid that we drew in the last tutorial, okay? And I'm just going to start to layer it now uh, with what I know about my space. <coughs> okay? Now, if you look at the plan, you'll see that okay, that horizon line is two meters uh, above the floor. It's also the same level as the second floor. I can show that here. Right? That's two meters above the ground plane, and I'm standing in here somewhere. So I'm, so I'm making that second floor my eye line. So I'm not actually going to see it. It is going to be hidden by that horizon line in a way. It's a little bit confusing maybe. I hope not too confusing. And these steps here just start to walk up to that. And that's why I wanted to look at that from that oblique angle so I could see those steps in better perspective. Um, they're tough to draw. I will likely do a separate tutorial just on stairs. Uh, that show you how to construct these. I thought I was going to be um, tricky and, I, and, and clever and I could only, uh, I would only have to use um, partial framework to be able to build these stairs, but what I found out when I got into it is at the top I started to kind of get off of my measurements. And so I would encourage you, okay, when you're drawing these, okay, to think about drawing them completely in terms of the framework that you need to draw them and to be as precise and accurate as possible, okay? The other thing that I want you to see, and I'll bring that, bring that drawing back up, the section drawing, is that we've got a ceiling above us here that is lower than the ceiling in this back room back here, and so it's going to be interesting how we draw that. I had to add some, some uh, extra height here for the meters that I have, and I'll show you why I did that. Right. So if you notice, my station point's in here somewhere, and I'm going to look up, and I'm going to see that corner, and I'm going to feel that ceiling line being lower to me. Okay, That is this ceiling here, but it, the space actually kind of moves up past that, and so this corner, um, which we're starting to see in that drawing there, it's actually this corner that we're seeing. I'll talk about this in a minute is seven meters above the ground plane beyond, right? So I had to add to my measuring grid, and you can kind of see how I did that here, all right? Once I noticed that that was seven meters above the ground beyond, um, I had to add, I started basically at my second floor line, and I just counted those up to seven, and it allowed me to kind of construct that grid beyond, okay? So what I wind up with right, initially is something that makes a lot of sense. I can feel that space now back there. You can see this wall diminishing back and you can feel that corner back there and it kind of goes up and in back there. But once I start constructing these facades, okay, you're going to see that that becomes a little bit confusing. And so I'm going to show you how you might clarify that using drawing conventions. Okay, but we can start to see now how the second floor wall and these stairs work and go back to that space. And it's really just that, that rectangle. And this is my glass facade in the back that has that door in it. Uh, and I'm going to see part of this glass facade here that's wrapping around. Okay. Go back to the plan. Okay. I'm here. I can see that stair. This wall is the surface that I'm looking at. I can see this beyond it. I can see those corners back there. And I'm going to view a bit of that window in this area here, okay? I don't see anything behind me. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is start laying out um, my glazing system or my window system. But what I, what I found out is that it's actually two meters, two meters closer to me than the, than the uh, end of the building. Because you remember, you have that outdoor space sort of where the shell of the building extends two meters beyond this glass facade. And what happened, coincidentally, you can see, is that that facade actually ended up meeting this line here. It looks like they share the same line in space, but they don't. It's just coincidental, and it has to do with my station point. 
And I only found that out after the, after the fact. And so what I would suggest you would do at this point probably is rethink your station point and maybe redraw this. I'm not gonna do that um, today for you. I'm gonna show you my mistakes and we're gonna talk about how you could then iterate differently. So this looks a little bit confusing now. We'll talk about this window system in a second and the door. <clears throat> But you can see these share the same line. They don't actually share the same line. This is four meters back from this line. This line at the top of this window system is four meters back from this corner of the ceiling that then turns up. It's just because of where I happen to be standing that those are collapsing on each other, okay? But what I've done is I've drawn that window system, which is really just made up of these aluminum extruded mullions, they're called. Okay, M-U-L-L-I-O-N-S. Okay, and they're set up in a way um, that they start to break down that, that facade, the face of that building in an interesting way. And you can see that door really lines up. Uh, it, in perspective, it doesn't look like it, but you can see in plan that I go up these stairs and I go straight back um, to that door, right? So that wall actually sh is sharing that door and the side of that stair. Okay. On the left, you can see I've started to place in my mullions um, that wrap around from behind me um, and kind of come in uh, to this point. If you look in plan, you can see that where these stairs end and where that begins is about a meter apart, maybe a meter and a half. I made them a meter just for this drawing, just to make it easy. Uh, you can see that I just drew the framework here um, as an open, translucent framework, and I'm going to come back in and clean that up. Now, if you notice, I did make a mistake here. I know Professor Hughes is going to notice that I put my mullions um, here with the framing for my window system into the room and I probably should have shifted it out so it shares that wall. I couldn't just shift it though at the end of the day because this is in perspective and so these perspective lines are based on this vanishing point back here and their relative position in space. So if I move them out here you can see it doesn't match up anymore. So I'd have to redraw that. Um, I didn't want to take the time necessarily because I've got a number of these to make and so you can you can just see how I made that mistake, and, and you won't make that same mistake when you draw this. This line should be here with this line so that the floor line is continuous with the framing of the window line. You can kind of see it there, okay? Uh, and obviously there'd be a wall back here that extends out a little bit that I probably would see the face of, but this is tucked into, okay? But I didn't get that complicated today, all right? Um, now what you can see back here is that that outside shell, I can see it beyond the window. And you can see it, it disappears when it goes behind this door, which has a glass light in it or a, a glass uh, frame. And you can see the wall back here also disappears when it's behind those mullions. Um, these sort of center mullions are just made to kind of break this system down. Maybe it's about things that operate and, or open in some way, especially these, these windows that are... Uh, the units that are closest to the ground uh, that you could reach, okay? Finally, just to clarify everything, okay, using that grid. So we can line everything up right. Basically, you can see, <clears throat> I started just to make sure that I uh, removed a lot of those construction lines, clarified things in that way. Um, I started to use line weights to outline things. Uh, problem is now, if I look at this particular drawing, I'll take it away from my grid. I'll put it on top of my grid, rather. problem is now is that this wall seems to feel like it comes to this corner and there should be a line there and then it turns flat and it's because of this collapsing line here. So what we might need to do is go back and look at this extra height that I gave myself. Okay. Just find a way to right, use that. If I can get this thing in here correctly.
So what I might do is just dash up, okay, to that seven meter line and dash out to that seven meter line, which then gives me an ability to understand how all that's playing back, playing out back there. Okay, you can see they're not the same, and it's because my my center of view is offset to the left, but at the same time, I start to understand how that ceiling beyond the ceiling that I see back there in, in hidden lines um, moves back to that facade back there. Um, ultimately, as I said, I probably would just change my station point um, so that these don't share a line and I can actually see the top uh, of that window frame and then the wall uh, above it just kind of extending up to the roof, just to clarify. But essentially, um, that's the first assignment that you'll be given is to draw an interior one point perspective inside of the space um, that you're given on Google Drive.